Savings Month is a critical marker and reminder on the importance of saving, not only for us as individuals, us as and our families, but also for the country, because a saving um, a country is a growing country. The creation of Savings Month, you know, is the brainchild of the National Treasury, you know, under the um, a former finance minister with the, the Savings Institute, which is where it was created, and, and a couple of partners from the public. It's important in that sense, you know, so we definitely would like, you know, Savings Month to be a savings month every single month um, and every single day, uh, but I think July, you know, really create that, um, that reminder which is important for us. There's always a correlation between a saving nation with a savings culture as well as the economic growth of that particular country. If I could just use a couple of examples, if you look at, um, at India, economic growth is high because also their savings rate is also high. If you look at China, it's the same thing as well. In Africa, I actually had a look and the Republic of, of, of the Congo also has a quite a significant you know, a savings rate and a growth rate. You know, so it is important because the savings that you make, you know, they get to utilize you know, for investments in the country, you know, enables the country to grow and that enables the country to, to have um, uh, an increased employment rate. It's important that you know, everyone embraces the reality and also embrace the fact that it is actually a good um, way to, to future-proof yourself you know, from, from any unforeseen eventualities you know, that could happen in your life. The biggest challenge that we face is that most people only learn about saving when they are older and their expenses you know, already are fixed and you know, allocated to certain things and it's difficult to change from there. The banks, you know, us as, as financial services, I think we do that quite a lot with advertising, you know, with the products and services that we offer. Um, as I've said, you know, with the government as well, um, you know, the offers that they've provided, you know, um, the framework that they've provided for a culture of saving. Um, so, so I think, you know, the whole of society, but also um, the entities like ourselves as APSA, and also um, the government, and then also called the parents. You know, um, important that they um, they introduce this to their children and people that are dependent on them. You know, to start that saving journey. I think the starting point for me would be looking at your bank statement. We always talk about every year looking forward to, you know, the Auditor General giving us feedback around, you know, what he's audited in other. You know, in in the in the entities uh, of government, but the reality is, you can also be your own auditor general. So look at your statement and look at every transaction, almost every month, and see whether you are happy with what you see. You know, are there any expenses that you believe should not be there? Some of them might should not be there because you've overspent, but some of them should not be there because you actually don't recognize them. There's the capacity that can be opened up because you can challenge that and you can see, you know, what you can do. If it's you who's overspending, you know, in certain areas, you can then go and see how you control yourself a bit, a bit better going forward. You know, so those are the things that, as a starting point, you can actually do. The third thing that you can potentially do also is actually look into your account. You know, is your bank giving you the value that you um, expect from that bank? I mean, I think, you know, as APSA, we offer, you know, um, you know transactional accounts, you know, uh, for, for our customers, but that comes with a APSA reward, which gives you cash back, you know, um, for your spend, for your, um, for your saving as well. Um, you know, so it, it does, you know, give you that bit of cash back that you, you really can utilize for potential saving. There are people who you can genuinely feel that they, they, maybe they do go through that challenge because maybe there is not even enough of the income that they, um, that they get. But you actually find that even people who've got what you would normally you know, classify as sufficient you know, um, income, but it always gets consumed in other things. You know, um, you know, and also the challenge is people start want to look at when I've got enough money. You know, what is enough money? You know, 50 Rand is enough money to start a journey you know, um, because it's about behavior. Um, you know, and, and anybody can start at, at that point, you know, especially if you do have income. You know, I think there are people who we know may not be able to afford it because they do not have income. You know, so I think we understand for those, but I think those who've got income, in reality, uh, those people can um, look you know, um, deep into their, into their um, behaviors and their spending patterns and be able to find some capacity to save. Um, I think it is something that's possible. I've got a seven-year-old who I got a, a Mega U card for, and and I think ever since I've I've, I've gotten him this, he's, he's starting to be aware of the fact that money is is not infinite, you know, um, that it it does 
get finished because he sees that in his card um, you know because we allow them we allow him to to experience that you know um, so that's the first thing just you know getting you know um, the, the child to be involved as early as possible of course as soon as he's able to distinguish between you know income and you know um, and, and spending um, that's important you know usually around about five seven you know that's probably the right starting age as well um, so that's the one piece when you do that um, you are literally creating a long-lasting effect and the way to deal with money a relationship that gets built with money management which is uh, fairly Im important um, but it's also important to make it fun because kids are kids you know um, they want to have fun at all most of the time so if you embed that as part of the fun having you know um, including you know things like monopolies you know the money games that you want to play with the kids and it, as soon as you start involving that the, the concept of money, the concept of managing your money and preserving your money um, starts to play its role. Um, you know, so that's the, the, I think that's the one aspect that's important, you know, start them as early as possible and, and then involve them in some of the decisions, you know, over, naturally as they go, as they grow, you want to be able to introduce them in some of the decisions that you make in the household so that they can actually see how they impact them and how they impact the household as well. Um, I think that's quite, quite key. The other piece, you know, that I think um, needs to be done around that, you know, um, is is for um, for them when you start watching, you know, YouTube, you know, channels around money management, watch it with them. You know, the ones for kids, there are also one for kids that are not one for adults. But I think it's important that you you almost use quite a lot of the angles that they normally would appreciate, you know, and enjoy to then introduce the learning, you know, moments for them. So it's many, many years ago, um, Absa, we had a, um, a, a TV ad, you know, on, on Marshmallow, a Marshmallow TV ad, effectively. I mean, it, it's a concept that was taken one of the universities in, um, in the U.S. where they, they tested, you know, kids where you, you leave them in a room, you give them marshmallow, um, and you tell them that they must leave that marshmallow on the, on the, on the plate or on the table. Um, when you come back, you know, you will give them, if they don't eat it, you will give them another marshmallow. What you find in that ad is some of the kids, you know, they can't wait, you know, and some of them actually do wait, um, you know, which also speaks to some level of self-control. But the ones who actually wait and when they see that you're giving them the additional marshmallow, you know, the excitement, you know, in their faces and the smile of getting more, the fact that they now have double, you know, what they actually had. Um, it told us, you know, I think as we as we looked at it, that, you know, sometimes, you know, you've got to have to teach the kids in that way, even from a financial point of view, you know, um, the saving and the fact that it's a long term thing. Um, it doesn't mean that it needs to be boring, um, that you must save everything. You need to enjoy life. You need to spend where you need to spend. But the main thing, though, is at some point you've got to have some kitty that you left on the side as well. Um, I think that's the teachable moment for them um, that we always, you know, wanted, and I think that marshmallow campaign seemed to have actually brought that out quite a quite a bit more, and it was quite a, a very successful campaign at the time as well. I guess when you answer it, you can you have to answer it on two parts, right? So, you know, um, I I certainly do think if you if you look at the numbers that the Reserve Bank publishes, you know, in their BA 900, which is effectively an aggregation of all money saved with the bank, you know, um, uh, by individuals and by companies, you know. So just sticking to the individuals, um, you know, there is over a trillion, you know, um, that is currently saved, you know, by individuals in the country um, right now, you know, across all the banks. Now, of course, APSA is is one of the leaders in in that space in terms of uh, attracting quite a lot of those deposits you know so so customers trust you know us uh, quite a quite a lot more um but i mean i think that's just looking at it people putting it in the bank you know and that's also growing you know on average of about seven seven and a half percent every single year um you know so that that is quite significant but we also recognize that, you know, there are those that are able to afford to save. You know, they save more when they do save. Um, you know, so some of, of the savings is from pensioners, you know, so they do get these lump sums from, from, um, from when they stop working, you know, um, you know from, from um, where they would have been, you know, contributing for, for retirement. Um, but we do think, though, there's quite a big section of the population that still is struggling with saving. You know, there is one research that um, 
indicates that you know that our monies you know our salaries get finished within within a week you know of us having get gotten paid you know the reality of it the majority of the population does struggle you know to find um, uh, uh, capacity to save you know um, and I think that's one of the things that we need to find a way and every individual needs to find a way to to release a bit more capacity so that they can actually save and this is you know as we said earlier on um, it's about reviewing your you know your, your financial state um, your bank statement um, speaking you know to to a financial advisor to review your spending habits and, and, and patterns um, to identify areas that um, you know either can be done away with or you can do better you know in um, you know in order for you to release a bit more um, so I do think you know the, the country if you look at the numbers you know saving is there you know um, but when you start to break it down you're gonna find that it, it is concentrated in a certain section of, of individuals um, you know so you wanna you know almost allow for the bigger population to also uh, for the larger population rather to also start saving it needs to be a simple, you know, sort of like approach, and, and don't complicate it, you know. Um, and then, um, and then the M, you know, um, of the smart it talks about it being being measurable, you know. Um, anything that you can't measure, that you can't quantify later, um, it will always be difficult to follow through with, and and the motivation to keep going, it's, you know, whether you've got fifty rand, you've got a hundred rand, you've got a thousand or five thousand, got to be realistic with where you are and what you're wanting to achieve um, because you also don't want to set yourself up for too much of a goal that you can't meet and then what happens you know um, if you earn 10,000 Rand and you want to save a million you know uh, within six months in reality is it's not achievable right you know um, it, it, unless you you've won somewhere you know which would have been incidental you know as opposed to a planned outcome you know and it also speaks to the art which is the realistic and you also want to break them down into as I suppose goals so that you can actually have milestones you know that that really what it is and it's a it's a good principle to follow um, you know from a savings point of view whereas the investing you know this is now where you are looking at long term you know I think someone might say what are you talking about long term you know let's look at it from a, a 12 month uh, or not you know so we could look at that as, as long term now this is where you're starting to play with um, investing in equities, investing, you know, in unit trusts, you know, um, and all the other vehicles and type of um, investments that you can look at, you know, um, uh, as a person. But what what's nice about it is that if you've got the savings, you know, uh, piece, you know, that that three months at least three months of your income or three months of your uh, of your expenses, you know, if you've got that piece covered, um, you've got those other two anchors, which is your insurance and your ability to borrow as well you know then you are able to invest and stay the course the the equities right now have been um taking quite a beating um you know and and so people get nervous you know when it when when that happens and then you find that because people are seeing themselves losing money um they then start to cash out you know because of that nervousness whereas if you've got the savings buffer and you are all comfortable then you are able to stay the course on the right hand side which is your um, your investment for long term um, and also investments usually will be the ones that you put in for things like retirement you know um, you know that that are quite important as well um, and also where you're investing because you you want to do certain big things you know down the line you know those are the type of you know investment that we look at yeah Uh, people call it emergency savings, call it emergency fund, you know, um, so, so how I think I like to, to call it is, you know, is, is, is the financial assurance, you know, truths that you, you've got to, you know, um, take care of, which speaks to exactly the point I think we made earlier. Um, have your cash savings, you know, very top of the house importance, you know, but, you know, whilst you're building that, because it's not an overnight thing, whilst you're building it, then have your anchors, the ability to access credit and the ability to, you know, from an insurance point of view. But an APSA offers those, right? You know, um, you know the nice thing with it is, you know, APSA insurance, you know, offers both, you know, short-term and long-term insurance, and that really one covers, you know, things that are for immediate, like your car breaking down, like your, you know, your household content gets stolen. Firstly, we, I mean, I would encourage every individual um, who who has got you know, sort of income to review their financial position, um, you know, on a, on a regular basis. I think we spoke earlier about the fact that you want to 
um, review your statements every month. Um, that's just reviewing your statement, you know, um, and, and you want to maybe do a holistic review of your financial life effectively uh, and where you are and, and then also with your goals, you know, around the goals that you, you really are setting for yourself. Um, you got to have to do that, re that review also on a regular basis. The reviews take different forms. Is you, you have a look on the internet, you look at what's out there and what's available, which is great. But you also need some kind of expert advice, someone who can do um, a financial assessment on you um, with, the help, with the aim to help you steer you into the right decision point. Um, financial advisors play that role. Um, now, UPSA's got financial advisors at each, at available at each and every branch you know, in the country, and they do not charge a fee for those assessments. It's amazing that people um, you know, have this available you know, that they could take advantage of. God would encourage people to, to really see, you know, seek financial advice, you know, especially, especially when you're not sure. You know, just maybe as a, as a closing point, you know, for me is that, you know, there's a couple of things that people need to take care of in money management because money management covers quite a, a broad, you know, um, uh, points besides just saving, you know, because saving is one key aspect of it. But the starting point for me would be, you know, budgeting. It's boring. It's it's mundane. It's, it's one of those things that we might, you know, you want to avoid as much as possible. But when you think about it, it's the most important part of your financial journey. Because without budgeting, you know, then you don't know how to create controls around your spending. What do I? What are my goals? You know, short term, long term. And I know it's it sounds cliche and something that gets to be asked quite a lot. You know, but they get asked quite a lot because they are important. You know, you know, investing time. It's so easy for us to invest time on on many other things. What we tend to see is people not spending time on finances, on their finances. But the point is. You gotta have to spend time to review your financial position. You know whether it's your statement, whether it's where you're spending and how you're spending. You know don't don't be the person that's the one that's always going to be uh, spending for everybody. You know the one who pays the bills all the time. You know so so you gotta make sure that you monitor um, your spending habits and and that requires time and and gamify it and make it make it fun. You know so that it's something that you go back to. Then for me I think you know the ultimate overarching thing is you you wanna be able to spend less than you earn. As long as you spend less than you earn, I think you are on the right track of where you should be going.